As Bitcoin has fallen, spot Bitcoin ETFs hit their highest daily inflows in a month. Right now, we've got Bitcoin hovering just around 62,000. July 1st saw $129.5 million of inflows. Fidelity's Wise Origin Bitcoin fund nabbed the most of it, about 65 million, followed by Bitwise Bitcoin, ETF, 41 million, and the ARC 21 shares Bitcoin ETF with 13 million. All three ETFs are trading lower today because they move, obviously, in conjunction with the price of Bitcoin. Now, since the SEC approved a slew of spot Bitcoin ETFs back on January 10th, Look at the total net inflows. They now stand at 14 and a half billion, according to crypto site The Block. And with hopes rising that the SEC is close to approving spot Ether ETFs, crypto exchange Gemini predicts Ether ETFs could see up to 5 billion of net inflows in the same period. SEC Chair Gary Gensler previously said Ethereum ETF approvals could take place sometime over the course of the summer. Here with his expected approval timeline, Pomp Investments investor Anthony Pompliano here in a Fox Business exclusive. Uh, I don't know what to take first, but I, I think it's pretty significant that as the price has fallen of Bitcoin, we have a pretty significant inflow for the Bitcoin ETFs yesterday. Is this a gutsier or more aware crowd that says, I want to participate in the cryptocurrency movement? I think that retail investors and institutions have both realized that Bitcoin is a resilient asset that's going to be worth a lot more five or 10 years from now than it is today. And therefore, when there are these dips, they look at them as buying opportunities. And if you think of great investors, they understand what they own. And when those assets go down in price, they buy more. And so it's the people who actually question if the price moves against me and I should I buy more, they just may not understand what they actually own. And so what's interesting is if we go back over the last couple of bull and bear market cycles in Bitcoin, we used to see a lot of 30% drawdowns. In 2017, there was five or six different 30% drawdowns. In the last cycle, we saw a couple of 25% drawdowns. Now what we're starting to see is only about 15% drawdowns. And so the volatility is actually being dampened. And there's this persistent kind of inflow coming from these ETFs, which is historically was not there. And so I think that really serves as this great tailwind for Bitcoin going through the end of the year. You just said that some investors buy things they don't understand. I think a lot of people who are in Bitcoin might not understand it. They don't understand what causes it to move. Because sometimes if the stock market's falling, Bitcoin's up or if the stock market's falling and Bitcoin is down. Can you give them any insight on this? Yeah, what's really interesting is uh, one of the great lies in the Bitcoin world is that nobody cares about the price. Actually, price is the marketing for Bitcoin. There is no centralized team. There is no board of directors. There is no marketing budget. So what usually happens is when the price goes up, everyone starts talking about it. The media covers it. And people go and they say, oh, well, if it went up, maybe it's going to go up more and they go and they buy some. And so most people I know actually showed up to Bitcoin initially because they wanted to make money. They wanted to buy it and have it go up more. What ends up happening is as they start to hold hold that asset, it's very volatile. So it goes up a lot, goes down a lot, and it makes you start to say to yourself, what is this thing that I hold? And it puts them on this learning journey. And so what ends up happening is you go from a speculator looking for price appreciation to someone who then begins to appreciate things like sound money principles and turns you into a long-term holder. And so if you look on chain, you can literally see majority of people who hold Bitcoin are not selling it when it goes down in price or when it goes up. They're holding. But they're holding. But people definitely are showing up initially because they think that I can buy this thing and it goes up you know, 2x and I'm going to sell it. And so over time, the Bitcoin community has to educate those individuals, whether they're retail or institutions, to become those long-term holders. Well, if this is any metric, Michael Dell put out a tweet. He put out a poll. Did you hear about this? And in this poll, he asked, what is the most important thing to you in your life? Is it Bitcoin? Is it AI? Is it love and relationships or none of the above? 43% said Bitcoin. 39% said love and relationships. But I mean, clearly a lot of Bitcoin aficionados like Michael Saylor dropped in and, and probably punched that up. But you've got Michael Dell as a multi-billionaire. And then you've got people who are just regular folks who are buying this crypto. The SEC said sometime this summer we would have a second choice, an yeah. Ether ETF. When do you expect that that will happen? I definitely think it's going to happen uh, You know, sometime this summer, summer, July, August. Uh, there's more and more rumors that it's going to happen sooner rather than later, so in the next couple of weeks, uh, potentially. Um, but I do think that Ether uh, has somewhat of a problem that Bitcoin doesn't have, which is you know, Bitcoin is the larger asset, about $1.2 trillion. Uh, Ether, about $400 billion. So there's a size component here of just how much money can institutions really put into Ether versus Bitcoin. 
But the bigger problem, I think, is the story. If I go on the street and I ask somebody, you know, what is Bitcoin? A lot of people will say some version of it's a store of value, right? You put it there, it's going to be resilient, it's going to allow for the protection against the debasement of the currency. If I go and ask those same people, what is Ether or what is Ethereum? It's a very convoluted, complex story. And so some people will tell you it's a world computer. Some people will tell you it's an app store. It's some people will tell you that it's- blockchain attached to it. There, there's all kinds of stories. And so the, the story just isn't as clear. And I think one thing we've seen over the years is, you know, look into the public markets. If you're a single company with a single product serving a single market, it's pretty clear what you do. But if you go and you look at things like conglomerates, a lot of times because it's what is this thing? There's right. too many moving pieces. Yeah. They actually trade at a lower multiple. And they end up having to spin off parts of it. Um, Correct. Really quickly, what is the high end of the range you see Bitcoin at for the rest of this year? I think that Bitcoin will continue to appreciate. I think we will get new all-time highs before the end of this year. I just think that the Bitcoin community should understand that now that we have uh, institutions and ETFs here, the volatility will be dampened. And so it may not go up as high or as fast as you want it to, but still it's this asset that is going to continue to perform because they're not gonna stop debasing the dollar. So higher than the recent high of 73,000. I, I think so by the end of the year. Pomp, good to see you. Thank you so much for having and me. Thank you for your service. Appreciate every it. day, not just on this upcoming 4th of July holiday. Appreciate it very much.